it's a joy to be here today. I've been going through some battles the first part of this year. I broke my knee and that got healed and then I hurt my back. And then I was on a cruise and fell and hurt my hip. And, and, uh, but I'm still going and still pressing on and with you today. Sorry, I couldn't be there in person, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do by the Zoom. Um, let me tell you, as, as a prophet of God, years ago, the Lord told me, he said, when you go to a church on Sunday morning, don't preach your favorite message or teach your favorite subject, but ask the Lord what he would say if he was there that morning. So I brought him with me this morning to talk to you and see what he's got to say to you. Now, it's kind of a, it's kind of a different word, so I want you to listen closely. Now, let me first of all say there's three types of, of churches in the land. There's those who just are thriving, who are just surviving. I mean, they're in Egypt, and they're no, known as Israelis or known as a Christian. They're in the world, but they're just getting enough to be saved, sanctified, and all the preachers trying to do is keep them saved enough to go to heaven when they die. Then there is the churches that's in the wilderness, and they're thriving. Uh, they're getting miracles. Uh, they're getting manna from heaven. And, uh, and they're moving, progressing uh, toward their ultimate destiny, but they're just thriving. And, but then there's those who crossed over Jordan and have entered in to their promise. God says in Deuteronomy 6, I brought you out that I might bring you into. God brings us out of the world to come into his kingdom and to fulfill his purpose. And God raises up a church to fulfill purpose. This church was raised up for God's purpose. It's not just the pastor and his wife and family and your church. It's his church, and he expects everyone to submit to his work and to his will and to his way. Now, what I heard the Lord say is he's, going, he's getting you ready to regroup the, the saints and the army. You're getting ready for a whole new campaign, a whole new work. Uh, well, here's what the Lord showed me. You've crossed over your Jordan. You've entered Canaan. You've won the victory at Jericho. You've gone through your Achan experience, and you're past that, thank God. And now you're headquartered at Gilgal, and you're getting ready for your southern campaign like Joshua. Joshua is going to be your book for a while. Joshua is a manual for warfare, and God's raising up the warriors and raising up an army to accomplish some purpose and bring some things to pass. Now, I want, I, want you to, I want you to really hear what the Lord has to say to you on that. And um, he said, we got to make sure every saint knows what their calling is, what their gift is, what their ability is, and what their contribution is to the body of Christ. I, I want to compare the body of Jesus to the corporate body of Christ. Now, let me, let me give you some uh, scriptures here that talks about the body of Jesus. And it says, the body of Jesus contained the fullness of the Godhead. Colossians 2.9, if you got your Bible, if you want to double check it. Colossians 2.9 says, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Jesus' body. Now, in the Passion Translation, it says it this way. Jesus is the complete fullness of deity living in human form. Jesus is the embodiment and demonstration of deity living in a human form. And he said, and, and, and he, the Father, God, and the Son, all one in the one body. Then Jesus, uh, then the uh, living Bible says, for in Christ, there is all of God in a human body. Now that body was crucified, resurrected, and redeemed to heaven. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Turn your We're one body. There's one body of Christ. Now, Jesus is one body, was one place at one time, and is a human body. And he said, but it's best for you that I leave and go away, because if I stay here in my mortal body, I can only be with people here and people there. But if I go fulfill my purpose of being crucified, shed my last blood, I'll redeem you from your sins, give you a born-again experience, make you a new creation, and you become a child of Almighty, eternal God. The God of the universe becomes your father, 
and you are part of his corporate body. And we are now the body of Christ corporately. And there's members around the world, multi-million members, and every member has a part to play. Every member has something to contribute. Uh, <clears throat> as it says in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 27, you are the body of Christ and members individually and separately, each one. Now, what I felt the Lord has impressed over the next few weeks and months, your pastor and leaders are going to work with you to make sure you know who you are, what you have, and what you have to contribute to the body of Christ. Because I heard the Lord say, you're asking for more, more, more. But he said, I want to make sure you're using what you've already received. Do you know what you've received? And it's important that you know what you've received. And, and the fact that you, you, you received the blood of Jesus for the cleansing of all your sins. You've been born again. How many really believe you're born again? Wave at me. You believe you've been born again? You're a new child of God. God, God is your father. The God of the universe is your father. And you're in the mess you're in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is our father. Now, we have a purpose and we have a destiny. And we have a work to do. Now, everything that Jesus had and is and has, he's given to us, the church. And he says, he's given us his life. He that hath the son hath the life. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And the everlasting life is not only quantity, but it's a quality, a type of life. It's a life giving. Uh, uh, he said, I give you my joy. I give you my peace. I give you my power. I give you my Holy Spirit. In fact, he says, everything that I have and am, I invest it into my body. And what I started on planet Earth in my personal body, I'll finish with my corporate body. And you and I are called to finish God's work. Now, we're in the Third Reformation. I don't know whether you've read it in my books on uh, God's process and purposes, but the first reformation was to birth the church, establish the church, and spread it to the ends of the earth. And then the church fell away for a thousand years from 500 AD to 1500 AD. And then God started the second reformation. And the second reformation was restored back to the church all the truths that were lost during the dark age that was in the first generation New Testament church. So we had those nine great major restoration movements from 1500 to 2007. And 2007 was a saints movement. And that uh, finished the restoration of the church. Now we have everything the New Testament had available in the present truth church today. And then 2008, God birthed the third and final reformation. Now the third reformation is to fulfill all things. It's all brand new stuff. Get ready. A third reformation. Going to these things you've never seen before. We've never heard before. It's going to be a revelation, demonstration. There's going to be miracles, signs, and wonders in the heavens. It's going to be like the days of Elijah and the days of Moses in Egypt. I mean, it's going to be exciting and thrilling. It's going to be horrible in the world, but glorious in the church. And that's the reason you've got to get ready for it. Be prepared for it. But your church is called not to be a ble just a blessing center or nursemaid or kindergarten or an old folks home. You're called to be an army. You're called to be a militant, progressive, aggressive victory in the Lord. Now, 2016 was the Army of the Lord movement activated. And that's when God took the church off of defensive to offensive. We're on the offense. We're on the march. We're on the move. And we won't stop until the glory of the Lord fills the earth as the waters cover the sea. And the progressive end with Jesus and his church is Revelation 19, where we have the final battle, and the wicked are wiped out, and the devil and all the evil was cast off the earth, and we set up new heavens and new earth. So we're moving toward God's eternal purposes. We're moving to what God wants done. And now we must understand we have a part to play.